Hey guys, Brian here, and today I'm going to cover the Mark 18 by ENL. This is the first M4 variation from them, so it's going to be very interesting. Check it out. So for this video, I'm going to take it all apart, show you what's on the inside, and put it all back together and show you the steps for the little things like the ambidextrous selector. So make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and check out my Gearbox playlist in the links below. If you have any other comments or guns I should work on, let me know. Okay, let's get started. First up, you're gonna have the metal sights and the Mark 18 style handguard. It is not a true Mad Bull or Daniel Defense copy, which those are licensed. It's gonna be slightly different with the screws. You're gonna have four instead of a total of six. So it's, it looks the part, but it's still more um, Mark 18-ish than something you find like in a G and G knockoff. So let's go ahead and take this apart. I'll do my best to tell you what tools I'm using. I'm gonna use a small punch pin, cap that. It's gonna be captured, it's very nice. And just gently slide forward, put the gearbox lower there. Okay. Hop-up unit is going to be like a one-piece rotary type it's going to look very familiar like some of the pro wins and aftermarket hop-ups, but it's going to be straight from the factory metal and rotary type. As you can see, you have the adjustments. There's no clicking, but there's a O-ring under here and it's, it's on there pretty firm. It's not going to loosen over time. So that's pretty nice and a strong spring to keep it pressed in there. And it looks like a regular charging handle, all that stuff. Nothing out of the ordinary. Honestly, it looks like a VFC um, metal steel. So nothing too crazy to cover there. Let's go ahead and put this aside. Oh, side note, hop-up unit. I've already taken this apart once before. It's going to be... M4 barrels, nothing crazy, standard. You can change this if you like. So put that side spring, cool. Put that over there. Okay, now for the lower, let's check this out. You're gonna have a replica stock, slide down. Hey, where does the battery go? So you're gonna have, to make it more realistic, you're gonna have this little cap on here. Little O-ring to keep it locked little hole so it's not waterproof and you're going to have your battery storage here. This is going to be only for buffer tube lipos, 7.4s, 11 ones nothing too crazy. You actually have this much, about this much room, you have a small fuse here, but you're going to have a good amount of room for buffer tubes, only one, unless you change the stock and do whatever, then yes, you can have more, but put that aside. Now to take this off, you will need an AR wrench, I'm going to use the Magpul AR wrench, or a flathead and a punch to rotate this castle nut. Oh, my table. So once I loosened, now I can back this out. You're going to want to back it out all the way. And you're going to notice this is loose. You're like, whoa. Similar to a real AR, unscrew, and boom. So this actually threads into the lower receiver. That's pretty cool. Back in the day, Ares and their Star M4 did that. Didn't really catch on. But the cool thing is, I can get to the spring guide now. Undo this. You can see that. And there's going to be lock open little instructions. These little tabs, see these tabs? They lock in here. So I can literally go like that. That's pretty cool. When you look at the other rifles like the Crytek, um, the Modify, and any other rifle, you need a long tool to reach in there or something like that. This is pretty straightforward. It's not the best. It can still loosen just like all others, but it's pretty cool. So, and to install that real quick, just 
slide it. Because a lot of people are probably going to be asking about this first stop. So insert. Boom, done. And then you tighten this and it kind of keeps it locked in place. That's pretty cool. So I guess just for convenience, I'll leave that, put that there. Um, another tricky thing is going to be the selector. You're going to have, it looks like a regular selector, small screw, but you're going to have just like a real rifle. It's not ambidextrous, but it has its functions like a real one. It transfers over. Looking at it, you can 99% sure switch it over to a VFC type if you like. So let me just go ahead and take that apart. I'm talking too much, sorry. Okay, let's get started. I just want to show you guys the cool stuff. Okay, so I'm going to use a two mil, remove this. You're going to have a small spring screw and a small ball bearing, just like a regular uh, VFC. Oh no, don't drop it. And then notice with this, the spring isn't greased like a VFC, so it can pop out. So just be careful. Okay and a large Phillips. Oh. And it comes out. You're gonna have two small screws, normal, a large uh, motor height adjustment screw, pretty standard, heat sinks with holes, it's nice. Standard AR type. Now you're going to notice the motor, it's springy, but you're going to have a red wire on the front, black wire on the back. That is different. It's not going to be the standard Tokimurui, Echo, Crytek, even G&G &G spec. It's going to be a little different, but as long as it's springy, you're, you're good. Okay. It's going to be using a torque motor. It's very torquey, just like in their AKs. This is their 170. So that's very nice. It's gonna be steel bearings, all that nice stuff. Put this far away so it doesn't stick to any small parts. I'm going to go ahead and remove the screws on the grip. Kind of dark in there, need more lighting. Okay. Cool, two little screws in there, pretty standard. You're gonna notice cutouts for the wires. So in case you wanna use thicker wires, that's a plus. Weird. Okay, you're gonna have silicone wires, of course. That's a nice thing. You're gonna have a blade fuse, automotive fuse, that works fine. No MOSFET, but still a good rifle. Now let's go ahead and take off the mag or the bolt catch. The bolt catch is gonna be more robust than a VFC and a Crytek. It's gonna be pretty beefy. Now to remove this, what I'm gonna do is be gentle with the wires and just gently tap, small hammer. Now the trick is you want to back it out so it stays in this section, but you can take this out. Having this pin loose and trying to get it in there, it's very tricky. Okay. I think I got it. So I'm going to press down, press down, and out. Cool. Now this will be loose and it might slide out. Let me see. Yes. This part, kind of like a VFC, it locks in like so. We're gonna have a small little spring. Don't lose that, but if you do, um, a standard, I think like a version two cutoff lever spring would work as a substitute. So just be careful, there are a lot of small parts. You can lose that, but it's easy to fix it. And I'm assuming there's gonna be parts. Okay. Now I have that captured from there, that's fine. Press in and lift up 
and over to remove. Good. Okay, didn't jump off. You're gonna have a regular, more real steel type mag release. You're gonna find this like in the VFCs. And just put that over there. Okay, now we have a little four pin tap. Which way is it? I'm not sure. You tap this way. Standard AR little pin, put that aside. Push on this rear body pin. It's locked. You're gonna have a small 1.5 Allen and a spring and a detent that locks this in place. It's gonna be more robust, similar to a real rifle compared to like a VFC or anything else. So it's, it's in there good. Now the tricky part is, how do we take this out? If you read in the instruction manual, it does say at a 45 degree angle, but it's not really helpful. So what I'm gonna do is, I had it in safe mode. I'm going to rotate and make it like that. And you're gonna lose parts, this will be tricky. Okay, that part fell off, don't worry. And wiggle the wires out. That will be your nemesis. But hopefully this video will help you. Okay, you're gonna have a regular lower, doesn't even have the markings yet, but that's it. Nothing too fancy, put that aside. Let's look at the selector parts. You're gonna have, as you can tell, looks very similar to like a VFC PH15. PH you're gonna have this little part, and you're gonna have this, just goes on the outside. I'll get to those later. Put those aside. Okay, that comes off. Just like a current VFC, put those over there. Okay. Now they're still debating on if they're gonna have a spring release when it's on safe mode, which would be a little part here in a spring, but without it, it still works like a regular version of the gearbox. I might as well remove the spring. Boom, done. Put that aside. I'm gonna go ahead and open this. screws put those over there okay no spring tension let me just open this force a habit okay you're gonna notice the gearbox is pretty reinforced standard for a conversion to you notice the back end of course is different a little protrusion for the locking system up close you're gonna notice let me try to get that in the light. You're gonna notice the reinforcements on the front of the cylinder and the back. Don't really need this, but it looks cool. Also the radius. It looks pretty legit, basically from a mill, just clean through. And it has a good amount of heft. You have nice, I believe they're nine mil ball bearings. Yeah, they're nine mil, very sturdy. There's steel, that's good. Gearbox is not steel, it's uh, pop metal, zinc, whatever, but it's still good heft. Okay, let's look at the gearbox parts. Ooh, shiny. Okay. Open this up. 
you're gonna have looks like regular ooh, that's pretty flexy, that's nice. Uh looks like a regular version two tablet plate. Change this out if needed. Spring of course. Let's just Compression's okay. There's a little better. Need a warm up. That's pretty good. Cool thing about this is you're gonna have O-ring on the nozzle. That's nice, you can see that. You're gonna have, just like their previous models for the AKs, you're gonna have the silent type piston head and their piston with the three teeth that are made of steel and the second tooth removed, not even in the mold. It's pretty nice, light. Cool thing about this is you're going to have the e logo and this is going to be a steel one piece cylinder. So this you're gonna have, if this was oiled a little more, it's kinda dry. You basically have perfect air seal up here. The only way out is here. So no more Teflon tapes, O-ring fixes and all that stuff. You're good. So probably put a little oil on this, but not my problem. Okay. Let's look at the rest. For the gears, I wonder what ratio they are. They look like a good cut. Don't know the factory, but it says ENL 181, that's nice. ENL there. You'd have shims, good amount of grease, not too much, but just enough to cover them. That's nice. And all the gears are labeled, so that makes it nice in case you move your gears around. You're gonna have a little sector clip and of course shims. And a regular reverse latch, nothing too special. The trigger is going to be steel and it's gonna be like a gray finish. It's not like a black, it kind of stands out. Put that over there. Okay, and a small Phillips. Uh, I'll do it anyways. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take apart the safety. Okay, for the safety, it's gonna consist of these little parts. Part with the selector plate that works with, the trigger, the spring, and the screw that holds it all together. Next up with the small Phillips, I'm going to remove the wire harness. A little bit of grease there, that's fine. Then you're gonna notice the cuts and this little tab underneath to make sure the wires don't get in the way for the motor. It's pretty nice. Standard version two type wire harness. Doesn't look special, oops. Um, no contacts right here, so you can upgrade, it's easy. Silicone wire, insulation in some areas, and that's about it. Cool, put that aside. Don't lose a small little screw in the spring. For the cutoff lever, make sure it's wiggly. Okay. For the cutoff lever, it's going to consist of the spring, the version 2 lever itself, it's pot metal, zinc, and the small little screw. Don't lose those. Put those over there. Okay. Pop that off and slide this forward. This is the selector plate. It looks just like a VFC selector plate. So if you wanted to change this out or if you need a replacement, you could use a VFC, but you won't have that decock function if they ever make that. So that's it. Okay, and that was how to take it all apart. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put it all back together and show you all the steps. 
box, nice finish. The R shims, so don't worry. Like so. Go ahead and punch this little pin in with my fingers. Easy to put back together. They can be swapped, but you don't want to mess it up. So I'm going to tighten or loosen. Okay, hope you got some carbonated soda on that little break. And let's go ahead and put this all back together. I did not change the bushings or the shims. This is literally just to take it apart and put it back together. If you need shimming guide, that will be on your own. But rule of thumb, you want it to move freely and not rub. Okay, let's get started. First up, select your plate. Slide it in. You always want to make sure it can move freely. Good. Now, the little safety part. So I'm going to get the little parts. Part that works with the trigger, part that works with the selector plate, the screw, and the spring. Gently insert. Make sure it can move freely. Good. Spring and the little bar. Press it in. And good. Go ahead and get the screw and tighten. Just hand tighten. It's going into plastic, so you have to be gentle. It's good. Okay, now the cutoff lever. Cutoff lever, little screw for it, and the spring. Put them there. Put it in place. Hand tighten, can move freely, good. Flip it over, going to insert the spring and with my thumb like that, so boom. Flip it over and the wire harness, get the parts. I didn't change or bend the wires, I kept it how it is, just so it's easy to remember. Wipe some of that grease off. So I'm going to get a small little sliding contact, spring, screw, and the unit itself. You're going to notice for all M4 V2s a small peg there and a screw hole here. It matches. Self-explanatory. But make sure they're lined up correctly. Say if you're changing wire harness or gearbox shell, there might be a slight variance. So you might need to cut or sand parts to make them fit. Screw goes in place, good. And the spring. And I'll get the trigger. For the trigger, you're gonna have a spring. So I'm gonna get the spring insert like that and I'm going to quickly show you the parts how they work okay so for the trigger you're going to have fire mode I'm going to push the selector plate so it's in full auto See how it's not in the way? Push it in semi, kind of hitting, and in safe mode. So that's pretty cool. Put this down. Now, for the wiring, you want to make sure that when you install the motor, you don't cut the wires or damage it. So, cool thing about the ENL is there's this little bar that protects the wires, so you want to put underneath like that. Pretty straightforward. Same concept applies for any other M4. You want to have the wire that goes past the motor, that goes past the motor at the lowest setting. So when you look through this hole, you're not going to have any um, obstructions of the wires. So that's good. Just put it down like that. Now let's get the gears. You're going to have the spur gear. 
you have the sector gear, reversal action. Let me show you how to install that spring. So you're going to have a spring and a latch. Get the latch like so. Insert, twist, like that. Always want to have it where it's pressing up against the bevel gear. Okay, now for the piston, just I didn't change anything, so it's fine. Insert the nozzle, slides on like that, and the tappet plate. Type of plate will clip onto the nozzle, slide it on, spring like so, and drop it down. Put the spring on so it's springy. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that the piston rack is on the rack of the gearbox. You're going to have this little groove here that interacts with the piston. If it's at a weird angle, it's going to break. So you want to make sure it's good. You can usually look through the cylinder hole, or in this case, what I'm going to do is close it, push the piston back, and ID from the back, just to make sure. So the spring and spring guard over there, press down, okay, good. So springy, spring, 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 good. Close this up. Check again, okay, springy. Okay, gearbox is closed. Okay, now let's go ahead and install the selector gears and all this confusion. You're gonna have this little part, don't know what that is, just leave it alone. This thing, looks like it goes with it, okay. This goes with the selector plate, yes. And these two little parts interact like so, maybe with the D shape. Okay, that's simple. That goes through the gearbox like that. This part goes on the selector plate side. And this is where the switch attaches to, the threading, good. And this part, this part is gonna go on the right side and it's gonna interact with this fake little button. These little parts, this little slider part, you can tell it's raised a little. This part, it will literally slide in place and you're gonna have some slop just because they're not the same size. You have a channel to guide it. So there will be a little lag. It's just, it's an airsoft gun. So let me go ahead and put these in. Okay, for the selector plate. The gear, it's gonna be just like a VFC. Literally wiggle it in there and good. You're gonna have a small little recess in the gearbox shell. It's gonna ride in there. It's gonna sit flush with the selector plate. Now, if you look at it, you're gonna turn it safe mode. Springs there, careful. So you're gonna have safe mode, 
turn it semi-auto mode and full auto. Very straightforward, make sure the spring is still there. Okay, so for the time being, I'm gonna keep it in safe mode. I mean, semi-auto mode, sorry. I'm gonna keep it in semi-auto mode going at 12 o'clock. Flip it over and install that little part. Okay, now if you look closely, you're gonna notice there's no marks, lines, any indication of alignment like you would see with other current rifles. So this will require some skill and some swearing. So what I'm gonna do is, remember it's on semi-auto mode. I'm gonna look at this part and first figure out how, I'll show you. You have this little button, it goes in the gearbox hole. Like that. Okay, wild guess, it's going vertical. Let's see. So if I turn it, it sort of goes, it's off a little. Oh, that just fell off. Okay, I went ahead and installed both of the little gears and the little part that works with the selector plate. And if you notice how it turns, I want to keep it on semi-auto mode going up vertical, 12 o'clock. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to notice there's no lines, marks, or anything to say how orientation goes. So I'm going to get this little part, drop it in like that. Wild guess, but I'm going to show you how it works. So I'm going to keep my finger on this side so it doesn't fall out. And this side, semi auto. This side, it's semi auto. So as I turn, flip it over. Cool, it turned to safe mode. So that's a good rule of thumb. You don't have extra gear teeth up there. So let me turn it back. Vertical, semi, flip it over. It's almost there. It's off a smidge. Hold it in place. See if I can get a better orientation. It's either or between these gear teeth, but that's fine. Remember you do have a little slop in here. Okay, now the tricky part. Hold these in place. It's gonna be hard to film on camera because I literally have to hold upside down because this part has to balance. I'm gonna place this down. I'm gonna explain this a little better. Semi auto mode, safe, full auto. It literally, that little lip sits like that. There's no screws, no nothing. So when you install it, you flip it over and you balance. Hopefully you can see on this camera, you balance like so. So what I'm gonna do is reverse the steps. I'm gonna have it at the 45 angle. So I'm gonna drop the gearbox in. It will go into this channel and then kind of grab it and then turn. I've tried getting this down to a science and every time it's slightly different. So usually two, three attempts and then it works. Like for the other rifles, like for the Crytek and for the Skarn, it's you do it this way and it's done. This is a little different, so just bear with me. And hopefully this will help you guys and shed some light. So what I'm gonna do is turn it 45 degrees or so like that. About two teeth or two gaps open. So hold, 
flip, double check, yes, it's good. And route the wires through. And you're probably saying, what about, what about this? You don't have to do this, it'd be too much of a balancing game. You can do this after the gearbox is installed. So, tricky. I'm going to flip it upside down and I have it at the 45 degrees and I'm going to kind of get this on camera. First, okay. First, insert the trigger through the trigger guard hole. Press forward a little to make clearance for the back of the gearbox. Drop it down a smidge, like so. Press. Nope. Okay. It's in a little more. Let me check. This is off. That's bad. It's still there. Let me try. Because I said it takes sometimes two, three attempts. Nope. Okay, I'm looking through, that's good, that's good. It's going to be very tricky as you saw, it's, you're literally a blind man wiggling the parts around, but I got it. So I have, I was able to put this screw or this pin through and easily press this body pin in. So it's technically lined up. I see this, there's a little play, like I mentioned earlier, going on semi, and this is back a little. Let me check it. It might be off by one two. So I'm going to take this out. That's gonna hold it in place. Spring is there. I'm gonna put the little first semi-auto little ball bearing there, hold it in place, screw, and tighten. Let me check. Might be wrong. Okay, safe mode, safe, safe. Some auto mode, with a little play, semi full auto that works even if you get this wrong or if you omit it or cut it off the gearbox will still work fine so it's just if you want that little detail but that's it that was first attempt I practiced um, hopefully that will help you guys because it honestly is a pain and I just want to help you guys Okay, now I'm looking at the piston. Let me go ahead and check the piston. Looking in the back, I'm gonna see that the piston rails are on the gearbox rails for the guide. That's a good sign. Push it forward. And let's go ahead and get the spring, spring guide. Insert. And another cool thing is the wiring doesn't really get in the way it's not as clean as like a modify, but it's not troublesome. Modify is very tricky to take it apart, but you don't really need to. So close, twist, done, and put this in here to secure. Hand tighten, good. Let me go ahead and show you for your bolt release. But first, I need to put in the mag release and the little body pin. So I'm going to flip it over. This one's very loose. It's 
so that, that's okay. And then you're going to see ridges on one side flat, ridges facing outward, and try to spin as many times as you can to tighten. Press in, flip, and I want to do is pull up right tight. So I'm going to the right to tighten. And I'm pulling, get it past, and it's good. Basically flush. So now I can, good. Now, for the mag release, I mean for the bolt release, it's gonna, the gearbox is in there. You have pin, pin, this thing. How do you do this? You got this little spring. This one only came with one. You could use two, but it's very stiff. So I think one is fine. You have this part. First, look at how this goes. You're gonna have literally one way it can go, but this little lip catches on the bolt, the fake bolt. So I'm going to drop it in there and just look. First, okay, cool. It's easy to drop in. It comes out. It's simple. Now the tricky part is getting this little spring so it doesn't fly anywhere. And I'm going to press in this little slot in. And look, ID it, it's there. Get this little part. Good. And you're going to say, how the heck does that hold it in place? This holds it in place. So I'm going to do is press down with my thumb, insert kind of like a VFC. So now if I press on here, if you can see that. But I need to put this pin in. Now see, since I left this pin in there, it's going to be super easy. I can just first press it in a little, line it up. Being that it's a roll pin, it's going to be harder, say, to use a large pin or a large punch. A small one would go inside and expand it, locking it. So just press and for good measures, tap. Done. Cool. Let's look at this. So I can press. Boom. Look at that. Damn. Done. Whoa. Now let me go ahead and put on the pistol grip. Straightforward M4 pistol grip. So I'm going to have silver, silver. But if you notice, it's red on the front, black on the back just like a regular M4. Let me go ahead and tighten. Tighten. Okay, now you're gonna say, hey, these wires are very short. Did something happen while it's taking part? No, it just came this way. So you get the motor, you're gonna have the red pole, the black pole, it's marked with marker. And I'm going to drop it in. It's springy, good. And I'm going to plug in the black wire. What I did is I have the black wire going on this back side around the post or like the, the screw hole for here. So it's on this side and it goes over to plug in and opposite on this side. If you have it on this side and loop around, you just it doesn't fit. This is different, but same concept works. It's springy, so that's good. Now, motor base. Make sure the wires are out just a smidge so they don't get pushed down. Wiggle, press, it's flush, and get the screws. Go ahead and tighten. 
Titan. And that's good. And that's how you assemble the lower. Okay, now with a generic FIPO, it's 11.1. I'm going to check safe, semi, it's on semi. Very crisp. It doesn't have a MOSFET, but I like the break. It's good. And full auto. Good, good, good. Okay, now for the buffer tube. There's going to be no screws or anything and no obstructions. It's a clean tube. So you're going to say, how do I attach this? Literally like this. Just be gentle with the wires. Gently pull that through. And you're gonna notice you can just twist. As long as there's no obstruction and it's not forceful, I'm just very gently like this, it's fine. If you have to crank it, then you're doing something wrong. And you're gonna notice that you can make this go all the way forward. You're gonna see a little gap up here, close in. And it starts to get a little tight. I'm hitting the wire, so I back it out a little. You want to have the groove on the bottom for the sling loop, like so. And tighten the castle nut. So check. You can see part of the buffer tube in here. If you go any further, it's going to hit on the wires and cut the wires. But once you're checking and you're just tightening just ever so gently, you'll notice that resistance and you can stop. So that's an easy sign. If you crank this on, you will just go right through that wire. So it's tight, but it will loosen during gameplay. You do need to tighten. So crank. I moved it about a quarter inch. If you don't have an AR wrench, you can do the simple way of a flathead and get in the groove and tap. And that would rotate. So that's a simple trick. So I'm going to go ahead and cl close this. Get in there. Go on, get. Good. Get the stock. Pull down, slide in, good. Press the front body pin, and let me get the upper receiver. Slide this on. There's no nub on the back of the gearbox, so it's straight slide. It's flush. Press that in, and that's good. So the cool thing is, if I pull back the charging handle, it locks. Hit the bolt release, good. Cool thing is this charging handle, it's a stronger spring. It's not like a Marui spec or anything else where it's very weak. You have to actually put some oomph into it. Same concept as like a VFC, but it's just harder spring. So it's a little more realistic. So press, close, boom, done. And that is it. It smells like aluminum. Mm. Okay, this is how you work on the ENL Mark 18. Hopefully this video has been very helpful for you so you can see the inside, how to take it apart, how to put it back together. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. And if you see any suggestions for the next gun or anything, let me know, comment below. So this has been Brian and see you guys next time. Thank you, bye.